Okay guys, welcome back to Layla Central where I'll be showing you how I paint these concrete silos. Now, taking a look at these uh, silos from a distance, they just look like standard grey with a couple of variations. But uh, if you actually take a closer look as we start to zoom in, we start to see a bit of texture. Um, which, uh, you know, when you think about these double O gauge uh, models that we're going to be painting here. So, you know, as you look closer, you will see some of the texture there. But, um, you know, when we're looking about, you know, a bird's eye view away at our layouts, you're not really going to see the texture. If you're modelling O gauge, I'd put more texture in, but uh, for double O, I think this will do quite well anyway. So uh, now if you're watching this for the first time guys, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button and uh, so you can follow our progress and uh, as you can see, you know, once you paint your infrastructure and put some items on top, etc, you know, it starts to look pretty good. Um, and obviously there is many different ways of painting concrete, I'm just going to show you how I do mine. So let's get to it. So first thing off uh, that you'll notice is I've used some modelling putty, as I mentioned in one of my earlier videos, to try and seal up some of these gaps that have actually occurred. Now, um, I didn't go crazy with it. Um, you know, you can use some very fine grit sandpaper to smooth it as well. So the first coat I'm going to use here is some German Panzer Grey. Uh, so I'm using essentially a dark undercoat uh, for this model here. Now, just using the airbrush mainly because it gives a very nice smooth uh, flat coating uh, as well. Now I'm focusing it here on the actual putty area. Uh, and the reason for that is I want that area to dry first so I can see whether I need to apply quite a few more coats because that is a different surface to the plastic um, as well. Now the pressure that I'm using here on my airbrush is only uh, on 15. So uh, not a lot of pressure here, um, you know, just putting it on nice and thin and uh, going back over it again with more um, more of the airbrush as well. So, you know, multiple thin coats using the airbrush certainly works a lot better than one big heavy coat as well. Once that's done, then you've got a nice smooth coat as you can see here. Uh, the next thing that we will actually do is now apply some uh, Imperial Grey uh, Primer, or Grey Primer from uh, Vallejo. Now, what we're doing here is I'm going to be adjusting my needle right at the back here. So the idea is, is um, you know, I've adjusted the needle. So even when I press down with the air, I've got paint coming out very slightly. Now the reason for that is so you maintain that consistent level of paint that's going to be coming out of your airbrush now as you can see here i'm giving it a very very light mist uh, of this now i am probably about 20 centimeters away from the model itself giving this and you know i'm giving it a pass over it as i work my way around the outside of the silo and come back to where i started that area where i've started should be partially if not already dry um, because it is very light dustings that we're giving here and as I mentioned because of you know pulled that needle back ever so slightly um, you know I'm maintaining a consistent level of paint uh, coming out at one side of the airbrush itself so you get a consistent um, you also minimize any mistakes that you may potentially make as well uh, particularly I mean like this is a dual action airbrush so you know you can control how much paint comes out as well as so much air and you know a little bit of a bump or slight movement of your finger can ruin some of your work uh, if you're not careful so just to give you a bit of safeguard you know pull that needle back get it to you know the quantity that you actually like and then um, you know do what I'm doing here so all I'm doing is just giving it a bit of a dusting over it and seeing what I actually uh, like now you know in the real world concrete comes in many colors many textures um, you know and that's whether it's freshly poured for example um, you know as concrete ages it changes color as well there is many variations here so all I'm doing is I'm just doing what I feel looks right uh, to the shade that I'm after um, you know and just building that pattern up as well um, so you know trying to avoid any obvious lines any uh, marks that looks unnatural really um, so yeah so just go over it a few times until you're happy with it and uh, eventually you know you'll lighten it up a bit from this dark super dark color and uh, you know as you make other passes as well you're going to be changing the shade um, of these passes so for example 
typically this first pass would be one color as I pass over it some of those particles will land on some of the other uh, particles that have hit the model already creating a lighter version of the gray too so you know even though I'm using just two grays here you can achieve some pretty good results see here just right there is I made a bit of a mistake where accidentally I pulled the needle back uh, and created that you know bit of a, a pow with the uh, with the paint but uh, as you'll see as I go around and you know adjust the tones around the silo itself I will actually blend that in as best as I possibly can just to minimize its impact as well so if you do make a mistake like I did in one section don't stress too much thing that we're doing here is while I'm giving this a, a dusting over the, uh, the model again you know multiple passes the one thing I don't want it to do is make it one even flat color right across the whole model so even though I'm trying to avoid any patterns um, and obvious marks that don't look natural I'm still want to create that form of variation uh, in the concrete itself which you can see that you know I've got some lighter parts I've got some darker parts um, you know and they're smooth try and smoothly blend them out as well and bear in mind too you know while this paint has gone on it's not dried yet as well so you know when it's dried it's going to look different again as well um, so you know you try and create that modern, uh, mottled sort of effect if that makes sense Okay, and once you've done a few passes, you know, this is the text that you're looking at already on the actual uh, silos themselves. So just using two colors, you know, a darker gray and then a light gray, you're faced with that. So now the next thing I'm going to do is start using some other versions of gray. So, you know, I've got a mixture here from AK Interactive from light grays um, to medium gray as well. Now what I'm doing here is around the base of the actual silo, I'm just using, I believe, some light brown gray. Uh, just around the base there just to try and create a little bit of uh, you know weathering or dust that may have accumulated around the bottom there and look you can use pigments for that um, but you know if I can minimize you know uh, the use of pigments and use some paint to get the effect that I'm after I will certainly do that now unfortunately I didn't realize the uh, that shot there was just out of frame but uh, as you can see as I go around I'll just give it, uh, you know, again, nothing too sharp, but just enough to give it that little bit of point of difference as well around the base there. Um, and of course, as you can see in between each of those cylinders, you know, we've got this darker shadow right in the middle there um, as well, which is something that I've seen on some places as well. Um, so, you know, not focusing any of the light colors in there keeps that, you know, shadow right in where those, each of those uh, silos joins up. Once I'm done with that, what I'm doing is, is again, you know, having that airbrush about 20 centimeters away, using that color, just using it in parts around the silo uh, up above as well, just to create, you know, some variations in color, um, you know, building on that texture that we have already put down. Um, but, you know, just giving it some more visual interest to the eye. So when you look at it, you know, it's not just gray. When you look closer to it, you're actually seeing many different colors that's making up the one tone. And as I mentioned, you know, if you're a bird looking from a fair distance away, yeah, you're just going to see gray. But as you get closer to it, you're going to then to start to see some of that texture as well. And of course, there's no right or wrong way. Um, you know, you do it to what you feel is best and what looks best to your eye. Um, everyone's got many different opinions on how concrete looks. Um, and as you can see here, I'm just uh, using some more of that um, light brown uh, gray um, just across the side, as I mentioned, just to create that form of a uh, little bit of a difference, a bit of a look to the concrete as well, instead of just being dark gray and light gray, really.
now just switching you know between the different shades of gray so you know i've gone from light brown uh gray to light gray to medium gray and uh and you know what you, you can use um different products as well you don't have to use a like, interactive it's just what i use because i do enjoy using their acrylics um very good very reasonable price um and yeah so you know just giving it a good dusting over we switch it over again to different colors and just you know build up on that effect try and blend any uh obvious uh, patterns that are starting to emerge just to knock them back in as well Um, you know, pressure packs or aerosols uh, to create this effect but you know, I do find that you know, using an airbrush you've got more control and you still don't get as good an effect um, as you would if you weren't using an airbrush um, so you know you can do dustings with pressure packs and uh, you know aerosols um, to get a similar effect if you don't want an airbrush or don't have one um, but again you know it is tricky just to get that sort of balance and full control like you have with an airbrush. solos actually look after applying those different colours. details now here I'm just painting uh, one of the receivable uh, sheds here now I've used a piece of paper here um, you know because I was essentially taking the easy method I should have used something a bit more harder like a bit of timber um, or uh, card paper is not good as a masking uh, agent for when doing these sorts of panel lines as you'll see here um, but otherwise you know these are the same techniques and the painting methods that I used uh, for painting um, the concrete uh, oh, not sorry, the concrete, the cement plant shed uh, in some of the videos. So, a link will be in the description below if you want to know how I went about painting this. Um, so, you can also do it too if you wish. these equipments I'm just using here some metal grey um, now I've, I've undercoated these initially with just some uh, light grey uh, undercoat from 
<coughs> from uh, Vallejo, excuse me there. And uh, you know, I'm just giving this a grey, uh, a bit more of a dark grey undercoat just to, I don't know. I didn't want to paint it like a metallic uh, gunmetal because to me, I don't think it looks suitable. I don't think it looks natural. Um, and plus, I just wanted something basic on the top here um, because the focus is going to be down below where the row will be running, obviously. Um, so while I wanted some colour in this, I didn't want this to, you know, take up so much effort and then hardly ever see it, really. So again, you do what you feel is best. I've just done uh, something basic here. And then I'll hit it with some pigments later on. Once you've done that, here I am just uh, you know using a selection of pigments uh, from smoke to light earth, dark earth, and uh, also some rust, and just you know chucking them on, uh, blending them in a way you know that I'm actually going to be happy with how the look actually is. And then once done, I just seal them in with some pigment fixer. Um, so you know there's no right or wrong way you do how you see fit. This is just what I've done. And then uh, you know once they're fixed to the top of the model, which you'll see here, um, you know it looks quite good, and uh, you know it's going to be. It's going to look great uh, once this area is seen. And as you can see, the texture on the uh, concrete is actually there, or the cement is there. And uh, and again, you know, you can use uh, pressure packs for this if you wish. Um, there is many ways on how you can do that. This is just how I've done it. Um, so hopefully you've enjoyed that. finally get the one of the main lines actually up and running fully so there we go guys thank you very much for those that have watched um you know all my new subscribers thanks for uh, following along and uh you know if you watch this for the first time don't forget to hit that subs subscribe button so you can see my future content when i push it out and uh you know visit my channel as well thanks everyone take care and see you soon bye